Hi, thanks for joining me again in my workshop. Today I'll be turning a lidded bowl. I'm going to be using paduk. Paduk is from Africa and has orange hues. It's really, really pretty. And the reason why I chose this wood is because I'm turning this piece for my friend Dale. Dale and I have known each other since grade two. And although we don't see each other very often because we live in different parts of the country, we keep in touch via Facebook. Last December, I posted a video of a salad bowl that I was turning, and she, along with my sister, suggested that I should make more videos and post them on YouTube, and that's what I've been doing. So as a thank you for her encouragement and support, I'm going to be taking this wonky-shaped piece of wood and turning it into a beautiful lidded bowl for my friend Dale. I hope you um, stick around to see how that's going to turn out. Before I begin turning, I'd like to make a correction to some information I said on a previous video regarding my bowl gouges. So the bowl gouges that I use are from One Way, uh, as is the handle. And this bowl gouge is half an inch. The other bowl gouge that I'm using is also from One Way, and I've turned my own handle for it. And this one is three eighths of an inch. They are both ground or sharpened to a 45 degree angle. You can tell I'm ready to turn because I'm wearing my smock. And my smock, which is pretty ugly according to my husband, not at all fashion forward, uh, is a practical garment for me. I like it because it's got a high neck and prevents a lot of the wood chips and sawdust from going in between my clothes and my skin. It's really easy to brush off. And should I splash either oil, glue, or epoxy, on myself it's on this ugly um, smock so I really like it and it also has cuffs at the wrists which um, prevent the material from getting caught also in any of the moving parts that's also the reason I remove rings bracelets watches uh, I don't want to get anything caught in a moving part the piece of wood that I'm using is oddly shaped and I don't want to waste any of it because this wood is just beautiful. I've um, used my drill press and drilled a hole in there and I will be using this weird little chuck that actually expands out when you turn it in. So I just have to turn it in there. It's like screwing it in and now that's attached firmly and that's how I will be attaching it to my lathe to turn this bowl. And let's get started. The shape of this piece of wood is really awkward, um, so I'm going to turn a shallow bowl using as much of the wood as possible. This will be the bottom over here and the inside will be here. So the piece that went flying off was from a little crack that was on the end here. 
Uh, that's why face shields and protection are always the best policy when turning. This is the outside shape and I'll be turning the inside next. Hi my friend and great wood turner Christine Davidson made this tool for me. It helps hollow out um, bowls that have weird shapes to them like this little bowl here it'll be able to go in and hollow out um, in the curves. sawdust are a rusty color very very pretty but also very very fine so now that I have the shape and I'm going to start sanding I will be wearing my face mask and turning my dust collector on look how pretty it is so far with all the um, different shades and wavy lines through it I've mounted the lid on the little chuck that I have. I haven't started turning it yet. What I have done is put a little hole in the middle so that when I turn the finial, I'll be able to fit it in. So this is, will be the top of the lid and um, the backside will be the bottom. I'm gonna turn it around now and see um, how it fits. And So this is the lid so far. Um, it's really, really pretty. It's from the same piece of wood, so um, the colors should match. And, uh, but this one has a few different little marks on it. So I just need to sand it and then part it off and make a finial. When parting off a piece, uh, I use a parting tool. This is the one I used in this case. As the lathe is turning, you just cut into um, the, the wood and part it off. Now you don't part it completely off because then you might get some tear. So what I do is I take a saw for this last little bit and then just saw the um, middle off. I 
I've parted both pieces off and I want to show you the variation in color. So these two pieces come from the same block of wood and this one is so much lighter but maybe it's because this piece shows that it goes from darker, not this part here, but this part here, from darker to lighter, which is where this piece came from. And this one was just tucked next to it on the board that I had. So that's what makes, to me, wood turning so interesting is the same piece of wood and yet a bit, such a variation in texture and color here is the bottom of my bowl and the bottom of my lid. Now they need to be prettied up, sanded down. I can't use my cold jaws because these pieces are too small. So I'll be using my vacuum chuck. This is the motor for the vacuum chuck. There's lots of wires and um, tubes, hoses that create all the suction. This is the control center that allows me to monitor how much suction is actually um, being used. It is attached to the lathe and this part is where I will put the bowl and the lid and once the machine is turned on the suction will just hold it in place. This um, piece of equipment was made by Christine, my friend. It's not pretty but it sure works well. Lid on the suction is in there piece of African blackwood in my small jaws. African blackwood is rare, exotic, and a little bit expensive, so you maximize it as much as you can. I'm going to be turning it using this spindle gouge and just making a tiny little knob to fit on the lid. Um, it doesn't need to be big because the bowl and the lid are actually quite small, but it does need something to, for Dale to be able to lift up the lid and put it back on. So this is what I'm going to be using. Here are the three pieces of Dale's bowl. So the lid fits on there perfectly and then the little knob will just be put on there with a little bit of crazy glue or CA glue. And then I will oil it, sign it, and send it off to her. I've glued the finial onto the lid with a little bit of CA glue and I'm just going to put it aside while it dries. In the meantime, I am going to transfer some of this Osmo finish into a little plastic bottle so that it's easier to spread. I've never used this finish but it came highly recommended from some other wood turners when I asked how, what's the best way to keep the vibrant orange on the paduk. Uh, most colored woods like Paduke or Purple Heart will darken with age uh, when exposed to light. So I'm hoping that this new finish, which was a little bit more expensive than I pay for the tongue oil, but if it works to keep this nice and vibrant, then it's worth it. So I've shaken it and it is quite thick, much thicker than I'm used to. So I'm not going to put it in the plastic bottle like I had planned. I'm just going to take a paper towel and dab it um, in the finish and then on my piece. But first I need to sign the piece. I've seen Paduke spelt two ways, P-A-D-A-U-K or P-A-D-O-U-K. I like it with the two A's, so that's how I'm going to spell it. P. So the grain of the wood makes it um, quite
quite hard actually to have a neat uh, burn mark in there. But you can read what it says. And my first. I have a little bit of the Osmo oil on my cloth. Like I said before, it's quite thick compared to what I'm used to. I'm just gonna wipe it on and see what it looks like. Oh, it's beautiful. It does darken the wood a little bit, uh, but most of the finishes I use do. So I'm just gonna put a coat on, let it sit for a second, and then wipe it off like I would with the other ones. I think my lid is all um, dry now. So that's what it looks like. <laughs> Still quite wet. And I'll just take a new cloth and dry, uh, wipe it off. So I have a coat of the Osmo um, polish on there. I don't know if I'm going to need a second coat. Right now it's quite beautiful. It did darken the wood, but it's left a beautiful finish. It has to sit and dry for approximately 8 to 10 hours. We'll have a look tomorrow and see what it looks like. This is Dale's lidded bowl. Look how pretty that is. I'm gonna put it down because I've dropped it three times already. This is the lid. It is still showing all the orange and the inside and the outside um, of the base itself is uh, really, really pretty. I'm glad that you stayed to watch the whole video. If you spend a few more seconds, there'll be bloopers because <laughs> there always are bloopers. Thank you very much for watching my channel. Please leave me comments and questions. I'll be sure to answer. And until next time, um, stay safe. Don't waste any of it. So I've used the drill, <laughs> the drill, the drill press. Dale's bowl is finished. Look. It's still good. <laughs> I have slippery fingers this morning. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put it down. Dale's, <laughs> Dale's bowl is finished. Dale, if there's cracks in it, um, you know why. <laughs> it didn't have cracks before I started this. So, Dale Rogerson and I. Uh, Dale Rodgerson, lidded bowl, <laughs> a lidded bowl, a bowl with a lid. <laughs> Dale's bowl. <laughs> Dale almost didn't have a bowl. <laughs> which sits, <laughs> which sits <laughs> in um, uh, it, <laughs> it's bowl, not bowl. bowl. Whatever. To my shop. I'm gonna put my piece of wood down because I keep hitting it and making no. Hi, you know how we all have that quirky friend? Well, my friend Dale has a quirky friend like that. That's me. But I. <laughs> Hi, Dale. <laughs> I'm wearing my Spock. <laughs> Smock, Spock. I'm. <laughs>